Hey folks, welcome back to another video, and this time it is a more, yeah, DVD and Blu-ray update. Get some Millie Yellow. A little Millie Yellow for the cause. First off, I want to start off with a couple gifts that I got from, he didn't ask me for anything, he just, out of kindness, Matt, I appreciate everything you do, and to show my appreciation, please accept this early Christmas gift that I chose off your wish list. Regards, Will. And uh, I always keep these, because it does mean a lot. It's really cool. And he didn't ask for this, but I figured I was going to show some other stuff. I, the least I can do is show this. This is very cool. The Blue Underground Blu-ray of The Shaft. AK down and it does have you choose which one it has no new interviews with the actors like Naomi Watts or James Marshall or such but it does have a commentary of writer director Dick Maz and stunt coordinator Willem de Bechelor which I'm sure is more of a technical commentary but I'd be curious to see how they made this flick Behind the scenes footage, which from what I understand is like almost two hours or more than two hours of just rough footage from behind the scenes. You have a collectible booklet, trailer, teaser trailers. And just the fact to see this in HD is really cool. And I do want to, I reviewed this once long ago. I'm not sure if the review is still up. I do want to re-review this sometime because this is a lot of fun. I mean, it's a killer elevator movie where you, in five minutes, see tits and a guy's head cut off. You see the good guy kill the elevator's heart with a bazooka. You get Aerosmith's Love in an Elevator to end your movie on, music-wise. You got all sorts of insane stuff with how this ele elevator kills people. Which is fun. Now, I've seen this is a remake. I've seen the original, The Lift, and that was boring as hell. I'd much prefer this. So I yeah, I'm shocked as hell that Blue Underground did this movie. I know they did some of other Dick Maza stuff, like Amsterdam and The Lift. But yeah, I'm I'm still pretty surprised and this is very cool. Very cool. Really big fan of this movie. So thank you, Will, for that. Uh, another guy named Travis sent me a few stuff. Uh, he sent me a comic book, which uh, have over here. It's a Freddy vs. Jason vs. Yeah, it's over there. A Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash comic book, like the the third part of. I believe it was the second story, like there was two stories. Um, the one where it ends with someone going back in time and signing the warrant. Because if you know Freddy Krueger's history, the reason he got out, out was because someone didn't sign the warrant. So someone goes back and they sign it, which that's a pretty cool idea. If they made a final Freddy Krueger film with Robert England, that'd be the a cool way to end it. Thus, everyone would be alive. Had the Lightning Camps character, uh, the Dream Warriors, everyone would be alive. So, see, people ask, "What is a sequel that I wish was made?" That's one I would pick: Freddy versus Jason versus Ash, and you can end it that way. Hell. Have the Ash that I like, the one that I like from uh, Evil Dead 1 and 2, Army Darkness, not the bullshit TV series, which I'm not going to get into that argument as to why I feel that way, because that's that's a long story. I've seen clips of the show. I know enough about it. I, again, not this video. <laughs> um, I prefer the Ash and the three movies and the video games. 
hell, you can have him do that. That'd be cool, since he goes through time a lot, like he did in Army of Darkness. So that was a very cool comic. And then he also sent me uh, Travis VHS of Jade, which is the extended home video version, unrated. This has, to me, the, the better ending. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a VCR. I haven't had a VCR in quite a few months. It broke, and I, I don't really feel I'd get another VCR because, eh, mostly the VHS tapes I have there is just for look sake. Because I like, I like, uh, they have a history to them. And, you know, this is the stuff that got me into movies, VHS tapes. And, you know, I like the, I almost want to say bulk, like the, like this one, like if you have a DVD, it's dainty, but like you could kill someone with a VHS tape. And a lot of times I like the covers on them, or I like the, sort of like, in a weird way, it's like a piece of history in your hands. So I, I can definitely see why people collect VHS tapes. I'm not really much a collector, but I do have a couple of, couple that people have sent me as well as stuff on my own. And it's very cool to have as a keepsake, so I'll gladly keep that. And then he sent me this, Alone in the Dark 2. I'm not sure why. Uh, I've seen this before. It's a piece of shit film. Uverball did not direct it. It was actually two people, Peter Shearer and Michael Roche. It's one of those things where Rick Yoon plays the character that Christian Slater played in the first Alone in the Dark movie. Because Christian Slater and Rick Yoon look exactly the same, you know. You know, they're both white guys, right? Rick Yoon, really. And then you have appearances by Bill Mosley, Michael Pere, PJ Souls, Danny Trejo and Lance Henriksen. But you know what? I'll keep this for the collection. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever review this anytime soon, but uh, I don't know, maybe one day. S someday I will. This is PG-13. You don't realize this was PG-13. I, I didn't remember that. You did a Lone in the Dark movie that's PG-13. fucking 13. And just let people know there's Lance Harrison. For I could be wrong, but I remember Lance Harrison only appearing like at the end of the film. I mean, he wasn't the villain, but it's like they go somewhere and they get to his place. He's like in the fin at the end. But here it's like he's partnered up with Rick Yoon, it's like, I don't remember Lance Harrison being in most of the movie. Although I will say this does, the two directors and Bill Mosley are on the commentary, so. You know, Bill Mosley, I, I like him as an actor, so maybe that'd be a fun commentary to listen to. So, uh, but I'll keep this for the collection, so thank you for that. I didn't have that film, so. I'm fine with that. And he also uh, sent me an article on Kidnap. And I even asked him, how come you sent me this? He's like, well, to... It wasn't crazy. Even they said that the film was an hour and 34 minutes. <laughs> so it wasn't just me that thought, it's not an hour and 20 some minutes. Yeah, even this credit says it's an hour and 34 minutes running time. And if you want that, you gotta get on Canada <coughs> or the UK. And on a side note, I read this review and this review, I know people have their opinions, but this review is bullshit. This review is such a bit of cockamamie horseshit. Maybe it just pissed me off that this fucking person got paid for this review. I feel like Kevin Smith, can you get the money back? 
I almost want to read this and make fun of it, but I know that'd be really rude and mean. But but I will I gotta call bullshit on some of this uh, real quick right like, before I get into some of this is bullshit. Like okay. The car speeds off down a freeway with Carla in hot pursuit in her red minivan, putting everyone around her at risk, but she doesn't stop for half a second, even after causing a massive crash that forces an SUV behind her to spin out of control and roll over several times. Throughout the film, Carla shows a shocking lack of concern for any of the collateral damage she causes en route to saving her son. The motorcycle cop gets smushed between her minivan and the Mustang. The Mustang. Numerous other cars are slammed into. A pedestrian crossing the road gets hit by the perps. A good Samaritan and a commercial truck gets rammed off the road. For each of these horrific crashes, Halle Berry peers into her rearview mirror in a second, hunches her shoulders down, grimaces and speeds on without another thought. What kind of horse shit are you selling, guy? About every time she's streaming, she's crying, she's like, oh no. When, when the thing with the cop happened, she stopped and looked back at the cop and went, oh no. The Good Samaritan and the pedestrian crossing the road gets hit by the perps. Oh, you mean the scene that she saw that and there's a car coming at them. She literally veers her car like this to block the car to save this person. You mean that scene? And yet she doesn't stop for half a second. Yeah, you mean again when she went like this purposely to have a car hit her car to save this person, which smacked her, made her bleed all over, knocked her the, almost the fuck out on her airbag, and yet. Lack of concern for any of the cloud damage she causes. See, this one, this, what the fuck? Upon arrival, stalking around the house, Carla thinks to call 911. The dispatcher almost immediately triangulates her position and promises many squad cars full of angry cops in a few short minutes. Rather than hide and wait, Kara, Halle Berry's terror takes it on herself to roam around in search of her son, whom she finds along with a pair of other snatched kids. Yeah, God forbid a person wants to find their kidnapped son. Yeah, I know, and... Yeah, because cops are always right, too. Yeah, they're, they're never late. And yeah, I mean, God forbid, who knows what the kidnapper is really going to do. Maybe they're going to kill him in two minutes. Maybe they'll kill him in two seconds. I don't know, God forbid, right? <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, let me put it. If someone wants me to go to town, this motherfucker, you tell me in the comments. It may not be nice, but as Dalton would say, be nice up till it's time not to be nice but you know if like 10 people in the comment section say go ahead tear the guy in your ass or I'll do it speaking of which I, sh I did a video on this but again to show an update this is the blu-ray from Canada which is the full hour and 35 minute movie and thankfully, I wasn't the only one who liked the movie. So, hour and 35 minutes long in Canada. Best place to be is Amaz the Canadian Amazon. Or if you're lucky enough to find it on eBay. But, again, for those who didn't see that video in the U.S., they released a 14-minute cut version, hour and 20-some minutes. That version in the U.S. has a blue banner here, and it says Blu-ray, DVD, and digital. And the back is very different. And Canada is the one with this red banner, and just says Blu-ray and digital. And this is the hour and 35 minutes. So, And then some stuff I picked up. Very lucky that I grabbed this 
favorite movie of mine. I uh, love this movie, The Burbs. This is the Arrow video, which I'm not sure about this cover, so I switch it up to the regular. I like the, the, the older one better. I love this movie. It's my favorite Tom Hanks film. I would honestly say it's my favorite Joe Dante film, too. I, I love this movie. It's, I want to kill everyone. Satan is good. Satan's a pal. It's also nice to watch, as you got Rick Dutemann, who passed away, may he rest in peace. Uh, Terry Fisher as well. But you, know, you have Tom Haynes, you got Corey Feldman, you have uh, Bruce Dern, you have the Klopex. Very, very entertaining film, very funny movie, has nice references to... Tom Hanks watching The Exorcist and Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. Green Sky Morning, Neighbor Take Warning. Green Sky a lot at night, Neighbor Take Fright. Flight time, fucking. Reading that fucking article got me discombobulated. Reading just bits of that article. Bullshit. Why are you so mad? Because I'm jealous. Motherfucker gets paid for that shit. Let me try that again without sounding drunk. I swear I don't do drugs or get drunk. Although I should fucking start. Should be fucking vodka in this. But... In seriousness, I don't like alcohol. I'm more of a mellow yellow guy. The line was Green Sky at morning, neighbor take warning. Green Sky at night. Neighbor take flight. But I got this because I didn't have this film on Blu ray, I only had it on DVD, and it has high def presentation, newly restored from the original film elements. Has a feature link documentary with Joe Dante, Corey Feldman, Courtney Gaines, Wendy Shaw, the DP Robert M. Stevens, and production designer James H. Spencer. Has the original work print cover of the film. A Tale of Two Burbs video feature compared the differences between the work print and the theatrical cuts with optional commentary from Joe Dante. You have a trailer. And it's cool that it has a new documentary on the film. It's too bad that Tom Hanks doesn't talk about this. Because I'm. Yeah, it's weird. He'll do like an interview for Splash. But he won't do an interview for this. I guess he doesn't like the movie. Yeah, it's too bad. But great movie. Classic film. Glad to have this from Arrow Video. And these I got from... There's a video store uh, around my way that I barely go to because... Uh, more of a personal thing. Uh, pretty much way, way back when I worked at a video store and the store closed down. And before what I have now, I was looking. And this opened up and I applied like four times, even got an interview. I'm like, I got like five years of experience working at a video store. And the premise said, nope. I'm like, well, why? Like, I have experience. They're like, well, and then I remember talking with someone who used to work with me at the video store I was at, Mr. Movies, and they said, well, for what I understand, they don't like taking people who are at uh, a different video store company, like a competing video store company. I'm like, but it's out of business. Well, that's how it is. I'm like, ah, oh, so they're assholes. So fuck them. And that was like uh, years and years ago. So I'd never go there because I was just pissed off at them. But I said, you know what, fuck it. Things are going okay. Let me move on. Went in there just to look around. And they had some good deals. Uh, even though this says two for five, it was two for four dollars. And then Blu ray for ten bucks. So pretty good. Uh, the two for four dollars I got was Money Monster, 
Again, I know this is two for five, but they had a deal of two for four. I reviewed this film. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good thriller with George Clooney and Julia Roberts. I thought the acting was well done. It was directed by Jodie Foster. I think she did a good job. Fucking sticker. I hate these stickers. Well, this, these stickers aren't too bad. Because they're not leaving uh, much of a... You know, those fucking stains that other places do. So yeah, very smoothly. So these stickers aren't too bad. But yeah, I, I did a review of this film. I think it's a bit of underrated, just a good old-fashioned thriller where George Clooney and Julia Roberts, they work at this TV station. He hosts this financial TV show. And this one guy says, hey, you told me this investment. And really, he, George Clooney's just doing what he's told. Like, this is what mostly what he's told to say or he may like guess like oh based on this what they tell us here's what I think so he goes in takes over the studio has a bomb and says he wants his money back and it becomes this whole media nightmare and I thought it was a good flick no one really talks about this movie kind of came and, and went and then George Clooney and Julia Roberts are trying to figure out what's this guy's case and that in fact there may be something that did happen that caused this guy to lose his money and they're getting other people to try to look for it while trying to talk this guy down. I thought it was a pretty good flick. This one has deleted scenes, George Clooney the money man, inside the pressure cooker, analysis of a scene, and a little music video. What makes the world go round? Uh, that was probably from his uh, his financial show. Does I forget what channel is like one of those financial shows that try to be entertaining as well. I forget the fucking show. Money Monster, which I enjoyed. People will wonder why the hell I got this, but I'll explain very quickly. Well, not quickly because it's already twenty minutes long. Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies, which is a film I ranted on, but it was two for four dollars, so initially this was two dollars, and I got this because of this man here, Roddy Piper. For the Roddy Piper collection, and Sally, this was one of the last movies he got to do. And even in that review, I hated the film, but I liked Roddy Piper. So just to watch Roddy Piper scenes, I'm fine with $2. And for those who didn't see my review, this was written directed by a guy named Cody Knotts. You have appearances by Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Matt Hardy, Kurt Angle, Shane Douglas and starring Roddy Piper and the title pretty much says it all one of the big issues of the film is the sound like it seems as if the sound is really wonky and everyone like had to be redubbed and actually uh, someone who I could probably type it here on YouTube uh, someone who worked on the film actually was nice enough and commented to me and I actually want to read their Uh, response because they were very nice because I, I ranted on the movie and I even said Roddy Piper's the man it's too bad the movie is pure dog shit <laughs> that's what I wrote Piper's the shining star in this pile of crap The movie was funded partly through a successful Kickstarter campaign and through private funds from the three investors and stars several WWE wrestlers. Um, let's see. Well, it was on here. What the fuck? 
What the fuck? It was on here. What the hell happened to it? Hmm. I don't know. The comment is gone now. I know I didn't delete it because it was an, the person was nice. I thought it was really interesting. What the fuck, YouTube? Did you take the comment off? Or did they? God damn, YouTube. See, this is what I mean. Like, comments just disappear. I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere. God damn it. YouTube, you fucking prick. It was something to do, like, something happened, and they can only do what they... God damn YouTube. Fuck you. Anyways, I can't read you the comments. That was a waste of time. But, yeah, the sound is really bad. Like, the idea, yeah, it seems like things had to be redubbed, and... Also, it, this was one of those movies that was a missed opportunity. You, you wish that someone, like... The guy who did Hobo with a shotgun. You know, someone with that kind of directing had done this. But because the concept is fun. And Roddy Piper, he's he's great in it. I think it's worth one watch if you like Roddy Piper. The rest of the movie you, you might not like, or you may think it's just okay. But rest in peace, Roddy Piper. It was so sad to hear when he passed away. It was one of the ones that I heard a lot because I love him and they live uh, jungle ground the stuff he did with Billy Blanks back in action especially tough and deadly which I prefer over the the two man uh, Roddy Piper miss that guy so two bucks is worth it for him and for ten bucks I had to grab this because this was the best deal you can get on this movie considering it's a Disney Doctor Strange most places you'll find 15 20 bucks and they rarely go down but it was used which is fine because the disc looked fine and it was for 10 bucks I liked this film I enjoyed this movie uh, going forward with the Marvel stuff he's one of the guys I, I'm more I'm most interested in to see what they do with him because his powers and the actor surprised me I gotta admit that the actor did surprise me because I did not care for Star Trek into Farkness I, I didn't care for that I didn't care for his con but he did a good job in this and there's quite a few features see how the filmmakers brought one of comic book's greatest characters to life Find out what it's like for the cast to work on a Marvel film. Taking a look at the sets, production elements. Explore the countless hours of fight choreography, the actors endured in preparation. Interview with composer. Early peak at Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, and Avengers Infinity War. Which I saw that trailer. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind the Infinity War trailer. But keeping keeping my hopes down. And an audio comment to Scott Derrickson, deleted scenes in the dead reel. So that's Doctor Strange. Glad to have this. So to sum up all the stuff, we got Kidnap with Halle Berry, the Canadian release, which has the full 95 minute cut. We have Down, aka The Shaft. Thank you, Will, for this very cool special edition from Blue Underground. Grab this, the Arrow release of The Burbs, my favorite Tom Haynes film, to me, a classic flick filled with special features. Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies for Roddy Piper. Miss him, may he rest in peace. Gifts from Travis, Jade VHS, and Alone in the Dark Part 2. Part 
Doctor Strange. Picked this up again for about ten bucks. Worth it. And Money Monster. Definitely worth it for two dollars. And people wonder why I don't do a lot of updates. And some people will, well, you just wait for people to send you stuff. Well, it helps. <laughs> no, I'm just patient. I'm, I don't rush out usually unless it's a film I really, really, really want. But usually I wait. I'm patient. And you know what? It worked because I was able to get this movie for two bucks, which I enjoyed. I was able to get this for 10 bucks instead of 20 or 25 or 15. That's so why I'm going to wait for other stuff like uh, this stuff coming out. It's fine to wait. I got enough movies. I can wait. So that's why I don't do a lot of updates. But either way, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you later. Bye bye.